First, we're going to start out with the books by Ingersoll Lockwood, who was a very popular American political writer, lawyer, and novelist from the late 1800s. Now, two of his most popular works were illustrated children's stories, and these children's stories just so happen to contain a peculiar fictional character whose name just might ring a bell. This name is Baron Trump. Now, for those of you who don't know, Baron Trump just so happens to be the name of one of Trump's sons. So in these two novels, the first one being named The Travels and Adventures of Little Baron Trump and His Wonderful Dog Bulger, the second one being Baron Trump's Marvelous Underground Journey, feature a little boy named Baron Trump who is a wealthy young man living in Castle Trump, and he ends up growing tired of his wealthy lifestyle. So in a twist of fate, he ends up visiting Russia, of all places, to embark on an extraordinary venture that will shape the rest of his life. But that's not all. In Lockwood's final novel, which was written in 1896, it just so happened to be titled The Last President. So it shouldn't come as any surprise to anybody that there are some incredible connections to be made between the first family of the United States and Lockwood's novels from the turn of the 19th century. I mean, for starters, the main character's name is the same exact name as President Donald Trump's son, and Baron Trump's adventures in the book begin in Russia. But not only that, his adventures are guided by the masters of all masters, as the book calls it, a man named Don, or aka Donald. And now the reason for him going to Russia, the reason why Baron Trump visits Russia in this book, strangely enough, is to locate an entrance into alternate dimensions. Now, by Lockwood's third novel, The Last President, things become even more eerily linked to the present day. The story begins with a scene from New York City in early November, and it's described as a state of uproar after an election takes place of an enormously opposed outsider candidate. Does that sound familiar? All right, Sheriff, how long are you going to put up with this? What do you mean? How long are you going to let this con man walk around town? Be careful, son, I can sue you. How about it, Sheriff? When are you going to put the lid on? What for? Well, stealing is stealing, whether you do it with a gun or a mouthful of mealy words. I don't intend to sit here and be insulted, Sheriff. If your people don't want my help, I can go elsewhere. Well, wait a minute, Mr. Trump. You don't talk for the rest of us. Since the Sheriff wouldn't stop Trump, Hobie had to find somebody who would. Sheriff Chet Farrow was the gun law and helper, and Judge Clement was the book law. Are you hear about Trump? Yes, sir. What are you going to do about him? What do you want me to do? Stop him. From what? From taking the town. Can you prove that that's what he has in mind? Well, it's obvious. <laughs> but can you prove it? In order to arrest him, the sheriff has to have a charge. And Trump hasn't given him a thing to go on. Well, there's got to be some way to stop him. Well, if there is, I don't know it. Uh, it's a funny thing. Sir? When we were kids, we were all afraid of the dark. And we grew up, and we weren't afraid anymore, but... It's funny how a big lie can make us all kids again. Hobie had checked the town. The people were ready to believe. Like sheep, they ran toward the slaughterhouse. And waiting for them was the high priest of fraud. I am the only one. Just me. I can build a wall around your homes that nothing will penetrate. What do we do? How do we save ourselves? You ask, how do you build that wall? You ask... And I'm here to tell you. You're a liar, Trump. There's not going to be any rain of fire. Can you deny the meteorites will come? Can you deny the comet? Well, it's not going to happen the way you say it is. Aren't you going to stay for the fireworks? Huh? Looks like you're going to go before everything's done. I've done all I can for Talpa. Figure it's time for me to be moving on. Well, I think you ought to wait. Where you and I disagree. You're under arrest, Trump. What charge? Well, you write it any way you like. Grand theft, fraud, I think a jury will find it stealing. The election and subsequent presidency of Donald J. Trump has been one of the most controversial political events in U.S. history. But what if I told you it was all planned out decades in advance? What if I told you that you're living in a scripted reality? 
And what if I had the evidence to prove it? I'm talking about the predictive programming surrounding the Donald Trump presidency, which I will go over here in this video. Not only was his presidency scripted out decades in advance before our very eyes, so were his outrageous claims to build a wall and possibly even be America's last president. But we see countless examples of this predictive programming, from the sinking of the Titanic, which was quote unquote predicted 14 years before it actually happened, to the foreshadowing of 9-11 in multiple mainstream and underground media outlets, all the way to the presidency of Donald Trump that was actually planned out decades in advance as this video today will prove. Now there are several reasons why the so-called elites use predictive programming on the masses. First, it's a way to condition us into accepting our pre-planned destiny and scripted reality. Because if somebody subconscious has already been programmed and familiarized with a certain event, they're going to be much less likely to resist it once it happens. So without further ado, let's take a look at some of the examples we have of predictive programming for a Trump presidency, which in my opinion proves without any shadow of a doubt that the whole thing was planned long ago by the shadowy figures who control our entire reality. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Take me in, for heaven's sake. Take me in, O oh tender woman. Side the vicious sake. I have saved you, cried the woman. And you've bitten me, heavens, why? You know your bite is poisonous, and now I'm going to die. Oh, shut up, silly woman said the reptile with a grin. You knew damn well I was a snake before you took me in. Has he offered to withdraw? 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 He's really not joking, by the way, as the process for selection is extremely serious here in North Cornwall. We do it uh, very, very rarely. And we uh, do it, it is a great honor, because the, the noble order of Camelot Castle is, is something that we do take very, very seriously. Um, we have uh, granted knighthoods previously. Some of them obviously are private for, for obvious reasons, but in fact, we did knight Nicolas Cage. And what response have you had then from Mr. Trump himself? I know you, you mentioned his solicitor has been retweeting some of your tweets. Yes, his lawyer did, and one of his, uh, somebody who was working for him in public relations uh, also has been forwarding some of our, our tweets. Um, you know, uh, we haven't had a formal response from him yet, but let's see. And what would you say to him? If there was a chance he would watch this on the internet, what would you say to him? I think he is uh, one of the most noble men uh, today in the world, and I think what he is doing is something that we will, will go down in history. And I think King Arthur would be proud. And you'd like him sat here at this very table? Well, we'd be honoured. You can add your comments to our BBC Spotlight Facebook page, if you like, because there's lots of discussion going on about that story on there. 200, more than 200 comments yes. last time I looked. Yes. But not only that, after the city turns into a mob and starts attacking the rich, the book actually names the Fifth Avenue Hotel. And it says the Fifth Avenue Hotel will be the first to feel the fury of the mob. And the Fifth Avenue Hotel is in the exact place where Trump Tower stands today. So New York City in this book is fearing a collapse of the Republic, all because of a corrupt and unethical election process. And Americans actually start forming a resistance and protesting against this election process. Now, you might be able to chalk that up as nothing more than coincidence, but just wait until you see all of the other examples we have of predictive programming surrounding the presidency of Donald Trump. For our next example, we have the movie Back to the Future 2, which also happened to predict a Donald Trump presidency. It was screenwriter Bob Gale who admitted to the Daily Beast that Marty McFly's arch nemesis, the wealthy villain Biff Tannen, was indeed based on Donald Trump. And in this movie, it's Biff Tannen who turns his fortunes, among them a casino, into a quest for political power. 
And in this 1989 sequel, Biff then uses the profits from his casino to help shake up the Republican Party, and eventually assumes political power himself. Then, in what becomes a lawless, dystopian wasteland, Biff encourages every citizen to call him America's greatest living folk hero. But if you're still not convinced that we're living in a scripted reality, maybe this will help. The Simpsons also happened to predict a Donald Trump presidency, all the way back in the year 2000 with an episode titled Bart to the Future, of course very similar to Back to the Future. And in this episode, Lisa Simpson is depicted as being president, but only after Donald Trump is president and bankrupts the country. No, we've inherited quite a budget crunch from President Trump. President Trump. President Trump. How bad is it, Secretary Van Houten? We're broke. The country is broke. But not only did The Simpsons also happen to predict a Trump presidency, the episode's writer, Dan Greeney, said that the fictional Trump presidency was a quote-unquote warning to America. But the Trump presidency was not the only time The Simpsons have used predictive programming in their episodes. In fact, it's one of their favorite places to hide the truth in plain sight because it's a goofy comedy that nobody takes seriously. But the scariest part is, the sleeping zombies out there actually think these things are a coincidence. Some other examples of this predictive programming in The Simpsons include Lady Gaga at the Super Bowl that was shown a full five years before it actually happened, we have the death of Prince that The Simpsons also happened to predict, and then there's of course 9-11 with a magazine that says 9-11 well before it happened, and then let's not forget how Homer Simpson also happened to discover the Higgs boson particle a full 14 years before CERN discovered it. Homer Simpson, yes, a fictional character, may in fact be a scientific genius. As it's been revealed, he predicted the mass of the elementary Higgs boson particle more than a decade before scientists did. Back in an episode from 1998, in The Wizard of Evergreen Terrace, Homer becomes an inventor. A scene in which he's depicted in front of a blackboard bearing an equation actually works out the mass of the previously unknown particle. Now, you can't possibly think these things are all a coincidence at this point, right? Are you starting to see your scripted reality for what it is? Well, if not, there's still plenty to go. I even save the best for last. Next, we have some more predictive programming of the Trump presidency in the Illuminati card deck. Now, the Illuminati card deck has also predicted a number of other events, uh, but the Trump presidency is certainly on the top of the list. Here we can see the card, Enough is Enough. And as you can see here, he even has a quote, part of being a winner is knowing when enough is enough, exactly what it says on his Illuminati card, which you can see his face very clearly. It's a perfect match, pretty much. And on this card it says, at any time, at any place, our snipers can drop you. Have a nice day. Oh, but that's not all. Perhaps some of the most disturbing examples of predictive programming can be found in children's television programming. And yes, it's called programming programming for a reason. We can see how they are clearly molding and bending the young minds out there to accept their scripted and fake reality from a very early age. This first example comes from an episode of a children's show called Sheriff Callie's Wild West, which just so happened to air the day before President Trump was elected. And in this episode, Sheriff Callie is challenged in her re-election bid by an ill-tempered, cattle-thieving dog with awful hair, named Trusty Rusty. He ends up winning the election by rigging it, and then he surrounds himself with incompetent yes-men and starts changing the laws to suit and enrich himself, all while threatening those who speak out against him and then he actually takes former Sheriff Kelly and throws her in jail. And Sheriff Kelly, of course, represents Hillary Clinton. But this is not the only prophetic piece of children's programming that we can find. In the 2014 Lego movie, which was years before Trump even declared his candidacy, the protagonist, named President Business, owns a large business, has terrible hair, he wants to rule the world, and he uses the media to brainwash the public. Then he starts controlling all the surveillance, he rigs the elections, and uses militarized police to enforce his will. And he literally wants to 
build walls to keep everyone in their own Legoland. I mean, does any of that sound familiar? Do you still think this is all just a coincidence? Or do you think this suggests that our reality is being scripted decades, if not hundreds of years in advance? But just wait until you see this next and final example. Way back in the 1950s, there was a Western-themed TV show that featured a con man named Trump who wanted to build a wall. This TV show was called Trackdown, and get a load of this, the episode was called The End of the World. Got a name? Trump. I bet it fits. I bring you a message. A message few of you will be able to believe. A message of great importance. A message I alone was able to read in the fires of the universe. But be not afraid, my friends. I also bring you the means with which to save yourselves. Save us from what? From the end of the world, friend. Which I don't expect you to believe. But the rest of you, those who want to be alive tomorrow morning, I will tell you tonight. Remember that. Bring your friends here. I'll tell you tonight so that you will be able to prepare. Thank <laughs> you. 